Hey everyone, welcome to Bobcat Baseball Game and Broadcast will start in a few minutes. Sound check. This is check, Bobcat check, Baseball check. starting check, in a few check, minutes. Check, check, check. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are here at Newport Richie's Pasco Hernando State College for tonight's game between the South Florida State College Panthers as they come into town looking to try to continue to add to their 30 and 24 record on the, or excuse me, that was their uh, old record, Bob, in terms of their stats. We, uh, it looks like it might have had a, a different year on the stats there, but, uh, nevertheless, the Panthers come into town looking to try to continue adding to their conference record as the Bobcats will look to try to thwart that here this evening on this major Friday night in conference matchup. We're here with Bob Bade as always for tonight's broadcast and Bob this is going to be a big matchup between these two squads as again it's a conference opponent so if you're the Bobcats you want to go into this game and, and grab a win and 
and feel good heading into the weekend because we are rapidly approaching the month of April and, and the beginning of May, and it's going to be a very busy time for these Bobcats once we get into that month with a lot of the conference games coming up in April. Yeah, it's getting to that time of year, Dylan, where every game matters. Bobcats come in with a two-game lead in the conference. Of course, South Florida State College not out of it yet. They're certainly in the thick of it. And uh, the top four teams will go on to postseason play. And depending on how well their record is, is where they'll be seated. If you're the Bobcats, you like what you've got on the mound in Savarese. He's leading the conference right now in wins and strikeouts. So Bobcats have their ace on the mound. And I'm sure South Florida State College is coming in ready to play. Yeah, Bobcats will be having, again, Savarese on the mound. He's had a very solid season for the Bobcats. He's been making himself the ace on this team, Bob, and we knew heading into this season that the Bobcats were going to have to figure out who can kind of make a name for themselves at each of these positions with so many guys leaving the team last season and going to new destinations for 2024. So we knew it was going to be a challenge for Coach Lyndon Coleman, and he's done a very good job here this season finding some new replacements and new faces at some of these positions and we'll get through that here this evening as Dawson Bryant will lead things off here for the Panthers and we are just about underway here from Newport Ritchie Florida beautiful night for baseball just a bit over 80 degrees Fahrenheit here on this Friday evening and the first pitch will be called a strike from Savarese inside or inside the zone and we are underway from Newport Ritchie. Let's take a look here at the defensive alignment for your Bobcats from left to right. It's going to be Cole out in left field, DeGuespi out in center, and Korn out in right field. From third over to first, we'll have Castillo at third. Short will feature D. Alturi over at short. Second base will be Habuda. First will feature Dickerson with Tolentino behind the plate doing the catching work tonight. And that's strike three. What a pitch there by uh, Savarese. And just like that, we are underway with the first out of the ball game. And you want to get started early, Bob, if you're the pitcher on the mound for either team at that. Um, you know, you want to get that rhythm going early on in a ball game. And Savarese able to get the first out quickly, first strikeout of the evening. Yeah, especially, Dylan, this is the first game of a three-game series. Of course, they play one tonight, but then two tomorrow out state Florida, at uh, South Florida State. So want to get started off quick here tonight, and I'm sure whatever team wins tonight's game feels like they've got an edge. Of course, it's a three-game series, so if you can sweep, if you're South Florida State, you're really in the thick of things after this weekend. Pitch on the way to Davis. Davis... Put down a bunt there for a second, but pull away. So that's going to make it one and one. It'll even the count. Davis and Brian, the uh, Brian who led off this inning for the Panthers. Davis as well. We're both on this South Florida State College Panthers team last season. Bob, we remember Dawson Bryan from last year. I believe he had a home run during that championship tournament we had here at PHSC. The nice throw from. Second to first will be in time, and there is now two away here in the top half of the inning. Yeah, these are two good programs. Rick Hitt, head coach at South Florida State, a good friend of our program as well as we are of them. Just two really good programs, Dylan, that continue to produce good players, and uh, they play well on the field. They're well coached. I'll bring up Brandon Vargas, the infielder from West Broward. First pitch called a strike, and it's going to be 0-1. Savarese so really looking poised out there on the mound early on in this game. He hasn't allowed any balls at all so far during this outing. So it's a, a good start for the first inning here so far for Savarese. Hopefully he can continue that past the first inning if he's able to get out of this A-B. Here's a pitch from Savarese that's going to be up high. And we'll try one more time at 1-2. and two. Vargas, an infielder, 5'7", 165, bats right, freshman player. A lot of sophomores on this 2024 Panthers team, Bob, so definitely a lot of veteran experience coming from this team. And I think if you are a, a JUCO school, especially at this level in D2, you hope to have this much experience to really teach some of these younger guys. I think that goes a long way, especially once you get later into the season with these type of matchups on the schedule. 
Yeah, both teams got a lot of games under their belt now, Dylan. So it's time for the freshmen to uh, play like sophomores and the sophomores to really lead the uh, the teams going into the late runs and to the postseason. Full count, 3-2. Savarese, that ball's popped up over towards the first base side. And Dickerson will be able to make a play on it, and that will re end the inning. So 1-2-3, go down the Panthers. We'll see the Bobcats up next with D. Alturi, Arroyo, and Corn due up for the Bobcats in their first chance to hit. And we are back. Jacob Morgan will be on the mound pitching here for the Panthers as Bobcats will see D. Alturi, the shortstop, leading things off here for PHSC. Jake coming into the game, hitting 281. Dylan, eight home runs and 24 RBIs. Takes a strike on the first pitch. Bobcats have a potent lineup. Arroyo and Corn are your next two hitters. Altrui swings through that. Count is one and two now. No outs just underway here. South Florida State College went down one, two, three in the first. Bobcats have their leadoff hitter in Jake Altrui at the plate. And that's called strike three. Good pitch on the corner. One out here in the first. Chris Arroyo will step in. Arroyo hitting well at 351. He's your DH today. Hits from the left side. He's got five home runs, 17 RBIs. In case you're not familiar with the Withalacoochee River Electric Co-op Park here at Pasco Hernando State College. As that ball's inside to Arroyo. Pretty traditional dimensions when you look at left center field and right center. But when you get to right field, there is a little bit of a short porch. The home team Bobcats have their bullpen out there and that bumped the fence in about 10 feet. So a little advantage if you're a left-handed hitter and you can pull one down the line into right yeah and bob we've seen a lot of home runs sit out to that right field bullpen area out there so that's a that's a favorable spot for these hitters especially in this bobcats lineup in previous seasons so we know that that is a uh a hot spot when it comes to some of the home runs that are hit here at the ballpark and that ball is popped up well in the air the center fielder, Davis, will range on it, make an easy grab, and that will be the second out of the inning. So two quick outs here, and that will bring up the return man, Aiden Korn. 
Aiden Korn off to another strong season, Dylan. Comes in at hitting 397, seven home runs, and 38 RBIs. He is leading the conference in several categories. He's third in average. He's second in RBIs. Third in home runs with the seven that we talked about. He actually leads the conference, Dylan, in stolen bases. Which is interesting to think about, Bob, because last year, Corn really, we didn't see a ton of speed from Corn last season in regard to the stolen base numbers. We know that this team can steal bases. We know previous years, especially from Lyndon Coleman's aggressiveness of wanting to steal bags, we, we know this team has, has that speed and has that, uh, that base running ability, but great to see Aiden Corn really showing off that so far this season. Yeah, and he shows off what a good hitter he is there, Dylan, just taking the pitch the other way for a two-out single. So Bobcats have a little something going here with two outs, runner at first, and Luke Dickerson stepping in. Another left-handed hitter hitting 337, two home runs, 23 RBIs. Bob, I think the one thing about this Bobcats team, you look at the numbers and you, you look really down the lineup, everybody's contributing who is in this starting lineup, and I think that's a testament to – what this team has been able to do so far this season and there's so many new guys also this season that it's really impressive to see some of these guys really settle in and by this point you kind of know what you have in your roster so I think this has really been a great testament to the way the Bobcats have responded again with all these new guys jumping into the organization or into the program as that ball popped up in the left and caught and that will and the first inning so no runs though a hit off of Aiden Korn leaves him on base we'll head into the top half of the second inning no score here from Newport Ritchie Gene Quelo will lead things off here for the Panthers. It's going to be four, five, and six. Middle of the order for Rick Hit squad heading into the top half of the second inning. Bob Bay, Dylan Spalding with you here on this beautiful Friday night. Not a cloud in the sky here for baseball. And Bob, you, you used to play back in your day and... You know, having the weather like this, no clouds, what, what does that do as a fielder in terms of helping you field some of these high pop-ups that may sometimes go up in the air? Yeah, right now it's it's pretty good condition still. And there's a little bit of sun when the sun sets, though. And you can see our third baseman over there, Castillo. He's, uh, he's feeling the sun a little bit, but as that sun goes down, and of course then we have the best lights in the business with uh, Musco LED lights as Savarese gets another strike out there. But um, you love playing in front of a good crowd, Dylan. There's a good crowd here at the park. And uh, as soon as that sun sets and the lights start taking over, like you said, I don't think you can find better conditions both to field but also hitters. Hitters see that ball pretty well on a night like tonight. Oh, bring up Derek Bermudez after the strikeout by Quelo. And, again, Savarese has just been dealing here early on in this game. Two strikeouts already between the first four batters of this 
game and I mean it's again a testament to his season he's had so far on the mound he's just really just settled in and has dominated throughout the season here for the Cats showing you why he's the ace Dylan on the staff pitch on the way is gonna be a strike in these three game series we already mentioned it's important you know you get off to a win on a Friday night you feel really good traveling even if you got to play away like the Bobcats tomorrow but you get that win under your belt Friday night that's a big that's a big win absolutely especially against a a team that you know you're going to see a lot here down the stretch and and you know what the implications are towards this conference and how difficult this conference can be to win it's it's going to be huge to win these games and pick up these victories over over in conference competition as we get closer and closer to that tournament date here coming up at the end of april and you know, for the Bobcats, they want to host it once more. They've hosted it the last two seasons that the conference tournament has been intact. So they will love nothing more than to be able to stick around, stay at home, and, and be able to have that home cooking here uh, at, on their turf at, at PHSC. So th that's such a huge thing now to add for these teams is to be able to win that conference, that home conference tournament uh, advantage. Yeah, so as Dylan mentioned, the team with the best record will host that four game, that four team uh, round robin kind of format. Of course, if you get the number one seed, you play the number four seed opening up, and the two plays the number three, and then you kind of go from there in the double elimination tournament. But all the wins, Dylan, get harder and more important as this season evolves. And that's gonna be ball for the first walk allowed on the afternoon for Savarsi, excuse me, Savrisi. Bob, I'm knocking the rust off a little bit here in the broadcast Yay. booth. Got to gotta get back in, in shape a little bit. Nevertheless, I'll bring up the first baseman, number 18, Jace Jones, the first base outfield combo out of Cypress Lake. Savarisi a little high with that pitch, falls behind 1-0. First base runner for South Florida State College. Yeah, and I think if you're Savarisi, Bob, you just got to settle in and just keep doing what you've been doing. I mean, he really hasn't allowed anything troubling up to this point and still has a great opportunity to get out of this inning unscathed. So just stay comfortable on the mound and, and really don't worry about that guy over at first. Here's a pitch by Savarisi. That ball's popped up in the air out in the center field. That's going to be shallow. Nice and play. What a play by Dylan DeGespi. And that will, I believe, be... Yeah, it'll be an out. So two outs here. I thought that was a third out there. On It looked like originally on the scoreboard it said there was two outs, but... Yeah, they had the, uh, the wrong outs on the scoreboard. So two outs so this now, This officially though. will be two outs, but a great play by Dylan DeGespi, yeah. however, on the catch out in the center field he kind of had to drop to his knees to make the play there bob and, and a tough play for de big difference between first and second one out and runner at first and two outs yeah you definitely got to feel more comfortable if you're savarisi on the mound now that you know you have two outs and i don't know if he looked back at the scoreboard maybe he thought there was going to be two outs <laughs> looking back but, but fortunately though at least you now know you have two outs heading into this ab Ray Ross, the DH is up for the Panthers. Panthers just treading at 500 as a whole on the season. Ooh, Ross Ray hitting 321. Yeah, ball swung on high a little bit. Savary's been a little bit high his first time out of the stretch, of course, with that first base runner over there. So maybe a little bit of mechanics. He's going to need to bend that back leg and get that ball down a little bit. One thing about this Panthers offense, Bob, is that most of their guys in their lineup are hitting well over 300. So this is a dangerous Panthers lineup for Savarisi to go up against. And, you know, especially at this level, you really got to be at your best to, to be able to get through some of these lineups. There's some great hitters. And it's really, a, again, a testament to how deep junior college baseball has grown over the past several seasons and part of it is due to the covid stuff that's happened uh past in the past seasons as well with the eligibility and in the way that's affected things but it's definitely became harder and harder now as teams to go up against these teams because of how loaded they are used to be in the old days the seven eight nine hitters you could almost guarantee a quick inning but 
like you said, Dylan, both teams have got potent offenses. And when you get – and there's Savarese breaking up the strikeout. So that'll do it for South Florida State. And at the end of one and a half, still no score here. Dylan DeGespi will lead things off after a very nice play out in center field. It's going to be DeGespi, Tolentino, and Cole do up here. It'll be your five, six, and seven hitters in the Bobcats lineup in Lyndon Coleman's group. First pitch will be swung on a miss, called for a strike, and it is 0-1 to kick off the bottom half of the second inning. Good to be back, Bob. Obviously, it's been a while since I've gotten to broadcast a PHSC baseball game, and Happy to be back in the booth with you and get, couldn't ask for a better night of baseball. I mean, really just a, a gorgeous night. It's been a beautiful week all week, really, here in Florida for people who may be up north and <laughs> may not be appreciating the weather as much as, as we may be doing down here. But uh, it's it's been some good weather we've had down here and really baseball weather at that here in the state of Florida. Yeah, a lot of colleges are just now finishing up their spring break trips. A lot of them come down here and they pick up a bunch of games before they have to go back up north. Check saw down. the softball team playing a team from uh, Minnesota area last week. I think when you come down to Florida and you, and you come from these northern, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, you coming from these northern states, I think you really appreciate you know being down here, enjoying the sun, soaking in the sun, and and being able to continue to play baseball because up in those northern states, sometimes you cannot play baseball. The weather is just it's it's too impossible to play baseball games up in those states. So. I think for, for players, they must really appreciate when they come down here and, 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 and be able to play at these beautiful facilities here in the state of Florida. You remember Kevin Costner and he walked out on the field and he said, is this heaven? Yeah. Or uh, actually it was Shoeless Joe or Strike one three. of the players. And Kevin Costner said, no, it's Iowa. Well, that was me when I came down from New Jersey <laughs> for a baseball camp in February here in Florida. I said, boy, this is heaven if you can play outside in February. To guess we looked at a pitch there, it'll be called Strike 3. That'll bring up the catcher Tolentino up to the dish. Eddie L. Tolentino, 267 on the season. Six homers that it's tied for third amongst the roster in terms of that number. He's got a stone base, also 25 RBIs on the season as well. Seven doubles. That's third best on the team. One and one the count, one out here in the second. Not a whole lot of action. A uh, one base hit for either team. That was Aiden Korn. Ball low and away. It's gonna be called a strike. Two one and two now to Tolentino. South Florida State College had a base runner last inning on a walk. So both teams not um, not getting on track offensively yet. Anthony Cola waits on deck, and pitch is called a strike three on Tolentino. So two back-to-back -back Ks for the picture Morgan. Jacob Morgan so far dealing. That's his third strikeout on the evening, and that will bring up Anthony Cole to the dish. 
as the Panthers will look to try to close out the Bobcats. One, two, three here in the second. Got a battle of the Cats. Bobcats versus the Panthers. We do, yeah. If we're uh, talking about the biological part of the sport, yeah, Bobcats and Panthers going up against each other. There are a lot of Cats in Juco baseball, especially in, I believe, our conference as well. We might have another Cat, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in this conference. The Panthers, the uh, Palm Beach State Panthers. Palm Beach State Panthers, yeah. So three Cats in this conference. That's half the conference, Bob. There's a 50% Cat to make them all cat names. <laughs> 50% chance that a uh, cat team might win the conference championship. Because we've got the blue wave from Jacksonville. Yeah, that's more of a weather mascot, if you will. It's not a very uncommon mascot, actually. The uh, the green wave of Tulane in the NCAA Division I American Conference. They, they have a weather-related team with similar name. Pitch is called a strike, one and one. It'll even count here to Cole. Cole is hitting 309 on the season, four homers, 21 RBIs on the season as well. Strikeout numbers, though, a little high, 36 strikeouts on the season for Cole. So he's been susceptible to uh, getting into some strikeout situations here on the year, but he, he's been a solid hitter for the Cats. Two and one the count here. Two away in the second inning. Pitch from Morgan is going to be tipped off the catcher's glove and foul. Good time, I guess, since we're talking about the team. Still going to go over the conference. Pasco Hernando State College, they lead the conference at 10 and 5. St. John's River State College at 8 and 7. And Lake Sumter State College at 8 and 7. They're your second place teams. Then you've got Palm Beach State at 6 and 8. South Florida State at 6 and 8. And Florida State College at Jacksonville at 6 and 9. So no team is really out of it. I mean, one good weekend series by any one of those teams jumps them into the top four, and that's what you're looking for for postseason play. Get into the top four, and then, of course, if you're in the top four, better record is a better seeding, and if you have the top seed, you get the strike home series. Three. Looked at strike three pitch, so three straight back-to-back -back Ks for Jacob Morgan. An impressive pitching performance on the mound in the bottom half of the second. We'll head into the top half of the third inning. It's going to be 8, 9, and 1 due up for the Panthers as the top part of their order will be back up for the second time in this game. Marlon Bowen will lead things off. The left fielder patrolling out in that area here tonight. It's going to be Bowen, Mercado, and then Bryant will be back up for his second plate appearance as we're kind of leaving things off here at the end of the second inning talking about the conference records. And Bob, looking at the conference schedule coming up for the Bobcats, there's 15 games remaining left on the conference schedule and really a lot still to fight for for both teams but especially more so the Panthers and even the Bobcats to an extent as well as a first out of the inning goes with a 6-3 play 
short over to first if you're scoring at home, and that'll bring up the shortstop Mercado up to the dish. But kind of mentioning what we were talking about, again, 15 games left on the conference schedule, but you know, you're looking at the conference records right now, and if you're looking at it at home, you know, this is a big game for both teams. Bobcats can continue to distance himself in the conference standings while the Panthers are looking to be one of those top four teams, and they're right on the edge, right on the verge of getting in as one of those top four teams with Palm Beach State. So a win for both teams really are, are very crucial to the way this conference standings may play out as we continue to get towards the end of the month of April. Well, every team has played just about 15 games up to this point, and they've got about 15 left. So yeah. any one of these teams, if they go on a run, I mean, Pasco Hernando has been on a good run at 10 and five, but if you look at any team, including South Florida state college at six and eight, if they go on a good run, their last 15, they could wind up at one of the top seeds. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think again, you've got to be able to win these series, Bob. And, and I think you, you have to go at least, two and two out of three in these weekend series that that ball is hit out in the left field should be a routine play for the left fielder Cole Anthony Cole able to make a play and there are now two outs here in the third inning been a quick moving game Dylan yeah it's been a great game by Savarisi he's really pitched well and hasn't allowed anything major at all in terms of balls off the bat and I, I, really bad at balls have not gone in the favor at all for the Panthers. So I give credit to Savarisi. He's pitched very well tonight. Keeps working ahead of the hitters like he does there. Oh, one count. You never want your hitters to have a good count to hit on because then they start locking in on certain pitches and locations. Balls foul back towards backstop. And it's going to stay at 0-2. You get them 0-2 here and hitters have to protect the plate. They got to widen their zone a little bit. They got to do a lot of different things and that's why Savaris has had uh, good success tonight well you gotta wonder too Bob how this team will fare how Savaris will fare against the second time around for the Panthers I think you know once you get in that first time around players are still trying to figure out the pitcher second time around same thing as that's called strike three what a pitch by Savaris on the breaking ball and that will wrap up the top half of the third we'll head into the bottom half of the third inning Bobcats still looking for a score as well as the Panthers. It's going to be 8-9-1 and one due up for the Bobcats. Have had do, Habuda, Castillo, and D. Alturi due up.
And we are back here in Newport Ritchie, Florida. Habuda, or yeah, Habuda hit by the pitch. Kind of hit the ground and then hit him on his back there. So that will now bring up to the plate Castillo. Dariel Castillo, 293 hitter so far in the season. No homers yet on the year. 13 RBIs. 459 OBP has been one of the better hitters on this roster or better guys to get on base on this roster and there's going to be one away good bunt there though by castillo moves the runner up to second base now you got your top of the order up dl truly coming up he'll be followed by arroyo so bobcats playing a little small ball it's a close game and you never know one run may win it with hey, pitchers some, on the mound the way they're throwing sometimes the simple ball bob is is the way you got to go here in baseball and any way you can get runs, and, and maybe that's that's the option here with, with only one out now. Ooh, There's a hard. moving runner for the Bobcats. Habuda able to go over two-third on the pass ball, so a huge move. And actually, Bobby, it looks like we have a new pitcher on the mound here for the Panthers. This is going to be number 24, Gavin Florio, on the mound now for the Panthers. Kind of odd, given that Jacob Morgan had a really good outing. Hopefully... It's nothing injury related, but nevertheless, Gavin Florio is on the pitch here for the Panthers in the third inning. So kind of an interesting move given the fact that Morgan was really dominating early in the first two innings. Yeah, and the Panthers are going to play with the infield up here, Dylan. Everybody's up, shortstop in second. So they want to cut that run off at the plate if they can. Skied in a center, but short. Let's see if this is enough to score the run. Catch made. Throw We're going to have in. a play at the plate. No, throw comes in. And that will score in the run. So the first run of the night goes to the Bobcats on the sacrifice. Davis was able to make the catch and grab the second out, but the Bobcats knack on their first run of the evening, and that will give the Bobcats a one nothing lead in the third. Again, Bob, small ball worked out kind of in their perfection there. Really nothing too crazy. Moved the runner on the pass ball in, in Habuda and able to score the run. And Give a lot just... of credit, though, to Castillo. He's the one who laid the bunt down, got him to second, and yeah. then Bobcat's fortunate enough to have that pass ball. And that's why you always want a runner at third with less than two outs because a fly ball, a lot of ways will score the run, but a fly ball is probably your easiest method there so bobcats up one to nothing on uh some good baseball one one is your count here two outs in the third as the ball went foul over towards the panthers dugout panthers have the uh the protective netting over there on their side of the dugout that ball hit out in the right field that ball's deep that ball's trailing could that be yeah it's gonna be off the wall it looked like it could have been out of the park for a second but Fortunately enough, a double at least for Arroyo, and that will bring up Aiden Corn up to the dish. It was hard to see Bob in the lighting and such there out in right field, but fortunately enough, a double at least for Arroyo is able to keep the offense going here for the Bobcats. Yeah, we got a lot of shadows out there, Dylan. If you look right in front of the fence, that's a big shadow that gets cast out this time of night with the sun behind it. So a little hard to see for us. I'm sure the outfielders were tracking it. They got the ball in quickly. As Gordon, Aiden Korn takes a ball up high, 1-0 the count. Aiden Korn, the Bobcats' leading hitter. And if the inning continues, Dickerson is on deck. Nice shot by Aiden Korn. That's that should get a run in. For a base hit. Here comes Arroyo rounding third. He's going to walk in safely. And just like that, an Aiden Korn RBI single gives the Bobcats some insurance. It's 2 nothing. Boy, Aiden Korn is just a good hitter. He goes the other way in the first inning on a pitch outside. And then that was a little bit of a hanging curveball, something off speed. And he just got the barrel of the head. Barrel the bat out front and uh, drilled it into left center for a nice RBI base hit. So I'll bring up the first baseman, Dickerson. But, Bob, yeah, to your point, I, it really wasn't much on that hit there by Corn. It wasn't a hard hit ball out in the left field, and he went opposite field on that base hit. And that's going to drop in for a base hit out in the right field. Here comes Aiden Corn. He will be stopped over at third. 
for a single and now we got runners at the corners and florio is in some trouble now here for the panthers as bobcats are threatening to score and add on to their lead here in the bottom half of the third this is what you love right now bob this is what rallies up the dugout a little bit two out rally two nothing your score four hits here for the bobcats in inning number three it's been an impressive showing here from the bats so far with two outs throw over to first Not yeah i was i was wondering if uh, dickerson over at first would be on the move first and third you got to think bobcats like to be aggressive on the base paths but we'll see what they do here with the up at the plate the struck oh, out his first time had a move in I think Dickerson was on the move. He had to get back. He's got a short lead, but he he was maybe going on first movement, and he had to get back to first. Here comes the pitching coach out to the mound. This is going to be Andy Polk coming out to the mound to talk. Or yeah, Andy Polk will head out to the mound to talk to his pitcher Florio after a few runs allowed. No movement at this point for the Panthers out in their bullpen, so they're going to stick with Florio for the time being, but. It's been a unfortunate ending here for the Panthers, going from Morgan, who really pitched very well, and then Florio's a lot of few runs in. So, again, hopefully Morgan's okay. It really was kind of odd to see him already out of the game, but maybe they're trying to, to limit the, their innings, Bob. Maybe at this point in the season, it's been a long season so far for both squads, and teams are trying to, you know, conserve their pitching especially as we approach you know conference tournament time and postseason play i mean maybe it's something where the panthers are really trying to conserve their pitching and not really have guys go too deep in games i don't see any action in the panther bullpen yeah it must have just been a quick talk so next time they come out they got to make a change so we'll see it. we'll have to keep an eye out on the panthers bullpen and see if any movement it will be happening down the line remember the bullpen isn't fair territory originally when the Bobcats used to have their bullpen. It was in fair territory as well, or I guess foul territory, I should say, out on the right field side. The Panthers' bullpen is kind of nestled in foul territory down the left field line. So it is very much in play, especially if you're going to make a play out there for the left fielder. It's a, probably a tough spot to make a play as well when you have those in-play bullpens out in the, in, in the field of play. Yeah, Panthers can still get out of this as bad as it may have seemed. I mean, you make one good pitch here and you're out of the inning. You're only down 2 nothing, and it's still early in the game. Absolutely. Strike called, and it's going to be 0-2 now. 2 to Gespi. Tolentino re remains on deck for the Bobcats. Bobcats only two hitters away from going through the entire part of their order here in the third inning. Strike three call, and that will do it. So the Bobcats strike two here in the bottom half of the third inning on an RBI single from Aiden Korn and some small ball play from the Bobcats that allowed Habuda to score and come around the bases. It's going to be the top half of the fourth. Two-nothing Bobcats here in the fourth inning.
Vargas, Coelho, and Bermudez will be due up here for the Panthers as Sabarisi will be on the mound to continue his outing. Three innings of work, no hits allowed, no runs allowed, only one, one walk. One base runner has been allowed on so far for the Panther or for Savarisi and the Bobcats. It is it's really just been a, an impressive showing so far from number 23 tonight for PHSC. As Davis actually fouls on one away. I texted gonna be Davis, Vargas, and Quelo, excuse me. So I was uh, off by one batter there, Bob. Yeah, no hits allowed by Savarice, just the one walk. I might have just that jinxed them as that's going to be a hit. Dropping in for base hit. So Davis will break into the hit column for the Panthers. That will bring up Vargas now as the Panthers have some life here in the top half of the fourth. See, I just jinxed Savarese because you're not supposed to say uh, got no hitter going, Dylan. Yeah, I, I, just I know. Said no I hits, know. And then at next pitch, <laughs> literally 10 seconds later, next guy gets a base hit. Yeah, it's uh, – it's tough in the broadcasting industry because you do have to mention stuff like this. But uh, you he know, we should might, be we mad might at have jinxed. <laughs> he should. If I were him, I would be mad at me. I don't see him coming up to the broadcast. No, he's not going to so. do it today. He's going to he's going to go back and listen to the broadcast. He probably and will. He's going to say he shouldn't have said that. He probably will. One and zero count here to the second baseman Vargas, who flew out back in the first inning. This is only his second appearance up to the plate here for Vargas. So through four innings, Bobcats two runs on four hits, no errors. And now for the Panthers, no runs. They do have the one hit and no errors for them. Savarisi, the pitch on the way. That ball's popped up in the air. Shallow right field, caught, and no play over at first. Davis will rush back over to first to get back into the bag in time. Good play by Habuda there. That's his yep. ball. No way Aiden Korn's going to catch that, and Puda was def uh, definitive when he went out there to catch that ball. Yeah, that's just smart defensive play there, Bob, by the Bobcats, you know, allowing the second baseman to make a play on that. It's shallow right field and probably an easier play for Habuda to just range on it. If it was a little bit deeper, maybe you allow the right fielder, uh, Korn, to make the play on it, but that was a good job there. And Korn <laughs> able to make the play on it there, so Habuda and Korn... That, that Boy, kind of you, just, I literally just, you, I think I just talked about that. You, yeah, you can't say can of corn, though, for Aiden out there. No, that, it was not was a can of corn. far from it. He had to make a reach there at the end. But, yeah, perfect example, Dylan, of a ball. Habuda's got to run out for it, but that's definitely Aiden Corn's ball. And uh, not the center fielder because Corn's coming in on an angle, which should be an easier play for him. Aiden Corn, thank you for the demonstration of what I was trying to uh, explain to the viewers here on the broadcast. That was an Aiden not can of corn, though, on the catch. I can tell you that. It was a, yeah, it was Aiden and maybe a box of corn. I don't know. So two outs here in the f fourth inning. Throw over to second, not in time on the stolen base. Davis able to get there easily in second. Tolentino just not able to get the throw over in time. Yeah, Panthers have runner in scoring position with two outs. A lot of times these games come down to what teams come through with two out hits. See what the Panthers can do. 2-0, two, oh, two outs. Well, we saw Bob in the last inning. The Bobcats got rolling with two outs. So it's uh, not uncommon, obviously, in baseball to see these two out rallies happen. And maybe this is a chance for the Panthers to get going with two outs in the fourth. You just fouled that one off over in the trees out in left field. Still got the sun bearing down. I can see our guys on the left side, especially Cole in left. I see that sun coming right off his sunglasses. Two and one. That ball's chopped on the ground foul, and it's going to now be two and two. Two Wait. balls, two strikes, two outs, and ending four. Here from Newport Richie, Florida. Beautiful night for baseball here. This is just approaching 7 o'clock here on the 7 o'clock hour. What yeah. better place can you be, Dylan, tonight at 7 o'clock? I know, and it, it just baseball's in the air right now, Bob. Opening day was in the MLB yesterday. We had college baseball thriving. It's really a great time to be a baseball fan. A strike three on the swing and a miss is called, and that will end the top half of the inning. So we headed to the bottom half of the fourth, 2 nothing as the Panthers strand one. We'll head into the bottom half of the fourth, and we will see do up Tolentino, Cole, and Habuda.
And we are back. Tolentino will lead things off. The catcher here for the Bobcats. It's Tolentino, Cole, and Habuda. It's the bottom part of the order. Six, seven, eight here for the PHSC Bobcats with Bob Bade, Dylan Spalding with you on this beautiful Friday night as baseball is back in full swing here across the U.S. as that ball is going to be well inside. That uh, definitely makes you a little uncomfortable if you're Tolentino there after that pitch. That's one of those uh, keep it keep you in check there pitch, if you will, from Florio. Yeah, I was going to say probably going to go outside, which he did. Yeah. A lot of times pitchers, they feel like if you're crowding the plate and you're looking for something inside, they'll throw it inside. Yeah. Try to brush you yep. off the plate a little yep. bit. They don't want you digging in. Pitch from Florio. Outside again, ball four. And that will bring Tolentino over to first. And that will bring him now Anthony Cole to the dish. Cole struck out in his first time, as did Tolentino. Both guys were a part of that second inning. That's all Jacob Morgan go one, two, three on backwards K's. Those were his four strikeouts that he brought up to the table here tonight, although Morgan got taken out after that inning shortly after. So quick quick inning, quick day of work for Jacob Morgan. It's very possible, Bob, he could be a starter type. We've seen that in baseball implemented a lot as well, where guys only go two innings, and that is all they go. It might be a bullpen day, if you will, for the Panthers, and, and maybe that's the way they uh, they approach to this, tonight's game. So it's very possible that could have been the, the strategy going into this game for Rick Hitt and his, and his group tonight. Well, I could tell you something. You can never have enough pitching. It's very no. seldom where you say, geez, I got everybody available tonight to pitch. But a lot of these uh, teams now are in their conference season, which means they'll play one game Friday and then a doubleheader Saturday. They try to stay away from a lot of games during the week. And one reason is, is they want as many arms available as they can. But if you remember early in the season, Dylan, the Bobcats were really down in pitchers. Absolutely. They, they had at least three, four guys that could not throw, and yep. they've gotten them back, fortunately. But you don't know. Maybe South Florida State's a little, little light on pitching right now. Two and one, they'll be inside three and one. And if you are light and you need guys to maybe come back tomorrow and give you a few innings, you may not want to stretch them out too much tonight. Bryce Abuda waits on deck. Potential chance to put two runners on here for the Bobcats with a 3-1 and one count. Pitch to Cole is going to be well high and outside. And that will bring up Bryce Abuda. So runners at first and second. Two back-to-back -back walks to lead things off here in the bottom half of the fourth. And that will bring up Abuda for a chance to maybe try to repeat what he did in the last inning in the third he got on base and ended up coming around to score don't see any action in the panther bullpen so this may just be a uh, calm him down kind of visit by the catcher of the panthers yeah sometimes calm him down you know go through there uh, there is it looks like there is going to be some movement actually bob a quick movement already actually from the panthers dugout as We'll try to get a look and see who may be going out to throw for the Panthers. We don't have a really good view down the left field line just due to the fact that we have some fencing blocking our view down towards that side of the field. So, but yeah, I mean, kind of talking about the, you know, time out of the mound visit here. I mean, sometimes you just want to talk with your pitcher, go through, you know, his, his repertoire again as well and kind of figure out how do you want to attack this hitter, especially in a, in a you know, runners up first and second. This is a big moment here in the game where, it just could really extend the lead here for the Bobcats if a base a ball is able to get hit out into into the gap. First and second, no outs is a great start to the inning for the Bobcats. See how they play it here. They've got Castillo on deck. The 2-0. And that's going to be called a strike on the outside corner. Kind of painted that corner, if you will, and it's going to be 0-1. Ball's fouled away. 0-2. Oh, 0-2, oh, nobody out here in the fourth for the Bobcats. Two walks kicked off the bottom half of the fourth. And the last inning, the Bobcats brought two home and were able to give them a early 2-0 lead. We've seen two bunt attempts. Of course, that one wasn't successful, but we had yep. Castillo lay one down it. Ball, oh, ball, hit out in the right field. That's going to be trouble. That's going to be a base hit. Here comes 
Tolentino. Tino will score. Tolentino will score. Cole will stay at third. Just like that, another RBI single for the Bobcats gives them a 3-0 lead and extends their advantage. Just a great piece of hitting there by the Bobcats and by Habuda Bob. And really nothing too crazy on that base hit. Just kind of landed out in the right field in the right spot and able to bring out Tolentino and bring Cole over to third. And again, runners at the corners once again for PHSC here in the fourth inning. Wouldn't be surprised if Habuda's on the move here early with Castillo at the plate. Ooh, that's popped up. Popped up in the air. Trouble and caught by the third baseman by all people. And that will be the first out of the fourth. That's a tough play too, right? Right in front of the pitcher and somehow the third baseman able to range in and make the make the grab. I was thinking he would have given him a pitch to see if Abuda could steal second. But yeah. Coach Coleman going for the bunt there, trying to get second and third. Nonetheless, it's going to be first and third and top of the order for the Bobcats. Well, we've seen the Bobcats bob a few times this game, laid, try to lay down a bunt and try to move move runners. And, and again, it's small ball baseball right there. And, and sometimes that, that is the most effective baseball in certain situations, especially when you got a runner on. You may be able to move a runner – just based off his speed, that could have been a chance, but a throw over to second, really no real good read on that throw. That will bring a Buddha to second easily. Yeah, that's a play, Dylan, when you don't want to throw all the way through to second. Exactly. Yeah, you take the uh, throw to the shortstop. Of course, he comes in a little bit, cuts it off. If yep. that runner breaks for home, you feel your shortstop you got a good can make angle. a strong throw and, yeah. and get him at the plate. Yeah, it's a tough play, Bob. I mean, when you have those situations happening, look how much of a lead Habuda has over at second. He was halfway in between third and second, Bob, and yep. really aggressive base running here by the Bobcats. Habuda will take as much as the shortstop <laughs> will let him. Yeah. So you see where the shortstop is. Because you're not playing second. You're, now, you're, you're, let's see what they do. No, no, Habuda will take pretty much back. that lead yeah. all the way to short. He feels like he can race that shortstop and make it back. This is going to be interesting here to see how this plays out. The throw, the hit over to third, and a, Cole's going to home. He's going to be safe at the plate. What great baits running by the Bobcats. Habuda will be at third, so the out over at first does go to the Panthers, but take the run at home by Cole. Great base running and a great job by the base coaches for the Bobcats and Lyndon Coleman. I mean, that is just textbook base running from PHSC. Well coached there on the base pass. That was kind of interesting because Habuda, when that third baseman got the ball, Habuda wasn't very far from the third baseman, actually. But, of course, he's got to go to first to get the put out. Can't start chasing around Habuda. But good rest, base running by the Bobcats. Get some another run. Bob, I'm just impressed about that the, the decision making on that on that base running on that play. And to bring Cole home was a, a very risky move that could have gone either way, but I guess they felt that the the angle or the throw from first to home was, was wasn't gonna be as good maybe a good of a throw. And that was just a great job by the Bobcats, able to go after be aggressive and make that play at work out in their favor that, that was a really impressive job very impressed by this team and the decision making on that as well swung on a miss and it's now going to be a two and two now with two outs in the fourth to chris arroyo Three and two now the count, two outs in the fourth. Pitch on the way. And that's gonna be outside. So low and away goes in the Bobcats' favor. That will now put runners again on the corners for the ever dangerous Aiden Corn. Corn will have Arroyo over at first, Tabuda over at third, and here comes a manager Rick Hit out to the mound, and that will do it for Florio on the evening. So Florio 
got hit around here on the night after Jacob Morgan's two innings of flawless work. We'll head into a pitching change break here as the Panthers will have a new guy on the mound for the bottom half of the fourth inning. Two outs here in the fourth as it's a 4 nothing Bobcats lead. We're going to have, it looks like, an intentional walk to Aiden Korn. We mentioned how great of a season he's having, so a lot of respect there for Aiden Korn as they're going to walk him to load the bases. And it'll bring up Luke Dickerson. We'll get the pitching information for you in a second. Yeah, Kevin Rodriguez is the new pitcher on the mound, the sophomore out of Island Coast, FSW. Former FSW pitcher as well. 5'10", 160, left-handed pitcher. Has an 8.51 ERA, so he's he's been struggling a bit here early on in the season. We'll see if he can get out of this jam. That's going to bring in at least one run. Habuda will score. Here comes Arroyo. Arroyo will come around and score as well. Another two RBI single, and the Bobcats take a 6-0 lead here in the fourth inning. Great piece of hitting there from the Bobcats, and it is now 6 nothing PHSC here in the fourth. I'm sure Coach Hip brought in the left-hander to face Dickerson, Dylan, and maybe that was one reason he walked Aiden Corn and get to the left-hander. And a lot of times your left-handed hitters have a hard time staying in against a left-hander, but Dickerson did a great job keeping his front shoulder in. He just took that ball right back up the middle, picks himself up two RBIs and a hit. I'll bring up Dylan DeGuespi as Bobcats have gone through the entirety of their order. 0-2 count here to Dylan DeGuespi. DeGuespi has struck out in the last two ABs that have came in the last two innings. So DeGuespi will look to try to hopefully eclipse that and hopefully maybe get some runs in and continue this inning. Now remember, fans, there is a run rule in effect for these conference games. There are run rules that that are in place during these conference games. So there's a chance that if the Bobcats get to 10, we could be seeing one of those run rules come into effect here as we get later on into this game. Yeah, I got a ways to go for that, but we'll certainly talk about that if it gets close. Yeah, absolutely. A little bit of movement there from Aiden Korn. Second baseman getting a little aggressive. Korn does move, easily gets over to third, and also the movement from Dickerson as well over to second. So runners now in scoring position all over for the Bobcats for Dylan DeGuespi with a 2-2 count. 
So Aiden Korn adding to his conference leading stolen base total. Yeah. That's going to be his 14th stolen base. I really didn't realize that till I looked at the stats. Today. It's kind of hard to believe. He does, he's not really looked at as much of a, uh, a speedy guy on the base pass, but he's been pretty aggressive this season as that was swung on a miss by DeGuespi, and that will do it. So a few runs scored in. Make that a total of four runs scored for the Bobcats here in the fourth inning. We'll head into the top half of the fifth. Healthy lead for the Bobcat. Bobcats. Six nothing is your score. And we are back here in Newport Ritchie, Florida. Jones, Ray, and Bowen all do up here for the Panthers. It's a 1-1 count. Swing on. Swung on a miss. And called for a strike. And it's going to be 1-2. and two. New pitcher on the mound for the Bobcats in between innings. As this is going to be number 27 for PHSC. This is going to be Michael Savarisi. Oh, excuse me. This is going to be the same pitcher. I thought Severisi was wearing 23 for some reason, so my apologies. I misread there for a second. Pitch on the way from Severisi. The ball is hit out in the left field. That ball is deep. This has a chance. This is going, and all you could do is look up, and Dickerson had to look over the fence for a home run by Jones. Touch them all, Jace Jones. A solo shot for the Panthers' first baseman, and that will add the first run on the board for the Panthers tonight. Chase Jones able to get a big hit on that ball and able to take it over the fence deep into one of the more longer parts on the yard. And it's now 6-1 Bobcats here in the fifth. Hit up the middle. That's going to be trouble for Savarisi. He had to fall onto, back onto the mound to avoid getting hit there. He tried to get a glove on it. But another single for Ray Ross adds to the numbers here for the Panthers on the evening. Their third base hit overall of the evening. And that will bring up to the dish now the left fielder Bowen up to the dish. Marlon Bowen, an outfielder out of Bloomingdale. 
188 right handed hitter. 6-1 is your score here from Newport Ritchie, Florida after the Jace Jones home run. First homer of the night for both squads. The wind is blowing out towards left field, so not really, not really of a surprise there that that home run was hit out towards left center. And another base hit, so another drop ball for Marlon Bowen, and the Bobcats are in a little bit of a trouble right in a little bit of trouble right now with two base hits back to back plus the home run to lead off the inning. And I'll bring up to the dish now the shortstop Mercado. Vincent Mercado, the infield right-hander. Also a right-handed pitcher as well out of Monarch High School. Freshman out of freshman 5'11. And that ball is going to be bunt fouled back towards the backstop, and it's going to be 0-1. <clears throat> The 0 1 from Savarisi. Called strike down and low down and low. Right in the middle of the zone there. It'll be 0 2. So 0 2 count here in the fifth inning. 6 1 ball game here on a calm Newport Ritchie night. The lights are officially on here at the ballpark as the sun has yet to completely set. It's still not completely dark, though. Right behind home plate, it is darkening up, and especially out in right field, the shadows are starting to come in. Ball's popped up in the air. That's going to be towards the right side of home plate, and that will be out in the crowd. And a fan will have to pick up the ball and return it back to the players. One and two to Mercado. Movement over at second base with Habuda. And that ball is going to be swung on in the dirt. No play to be made. And a strikeout ends up going in the favor of the Panthers. So bases are going to be loaded. Or excuse me. They are going to call... The... They are going to call Mercado out, so it will be the first out of the inning. Originally, I thought Mercado was going to be able to stay over at first, but they are going to call Mercado out over at first. So only runners at second and third, but still a great opportunity. Another hit up the middle, and that will bring in two or at least one. And just like that, it is now 6-2, to two, and Sabarisi getting hit around here by this Panthers offense. Ray Ross able to score on the base hit up the middle. And that will bring runners at the corners for the center fielder, Adrian Davis. Adrian Davis out of Lakota West, Ohio. Looking to try to continue this good offensive inning that the Panthers have put together. Pitch on the way. Ball is popped up well in the right field. DeGuespi and Habuda going to range on it. They will give, or excuse me, Corn will make the play. Corn makes the throw back into the plate, and actually that was as perfect as you could have drawn it up as no runs move no runners move at all on the fly out to right field. So Davis will not be able to add to this lead, or excuse me, add to this run deficit here for the Panthers. As it stays at 6-2 for the score. I'll now bring up to the play here Brandon Vargas, the West Broward High School product in his freshman season. Vargas hitting 333 on the year, has the most at-bats amongst the team, 111 at-bats on the season. One home run, 333 batting average as well to his line. So 
So the 1-1 one, one count, two outs here in the fifth. Here's the pitch. Ball's hit out in the center field. This should be DeGuespi making the play on it, and it will end the inning. So the damage had not been what or has been done, however, by the Bob or by the Panthers. Two runs scored in the fifth, including a jo Jace Jones home run. It's going to be 6-2 Bobcats as we get back here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. We go to the bottom of the fifth, 6-2 to two Bobcats. Bobcats will send up Tolentino, Cole, and Habuda. They'll face Kevin Rodriguez on the mound, the left-hander for the Panthers. First pitch on the corner, 0-1 the count. Good inning for the Panthers. They pick up their two runs. And it's 6-2 to two Bobcats now with a four-run lead. Another good pitch on the corner, 0-2 count. Tolentino came into the game hitting 267. He's got six home runs and 25 RBIs. Balls in the dirt, evens count at two and two. Ooh, Tolentino got the barrel on that one, but lines out to third for the first out of the inning, and that'll bring up Anthony Cole, the left fielder. Again, this is a conference game between the Panthers and the Bobcats. Both teams very much in it. Bobcats leading the conference. And with about 15 games left to play, every team in the conference has a chance to make it to postseason play. Top four teams will go to the postseason tournament. So all six teams definitely within striking distance of getting those four spots. One and two the count as Cole swings through that off-speed pitch. A lot of shadows on the field now, just about 10, 15 minutes maybe away from the sun fully setting. A 
Nice pitch there. That's a called strike three. Two outs now here in the fifth inning for the Bobcats. Bring up Bryce Habuda. Second baseman for the Bobcats. Two outs, nobody on. Kevin Rodriguez really throwing good here in the fifth. Got no two count. I'm sure the Panthers would love a quick inning here and get back up to hit. Buddha takes that inside. So one, two count, two outs here in the fifth. Six runs, six hits for the Bobcats. No errors, two runs, five hits for the Panthers. No errors. Been a well-played game by both teams. That's going to be a dribbler up the right side. First baseman will take that unassisted. So the Bobcats go down. One, two, three here in the fifth, and we'll move on to the sixth inning. Six to two, Bobcats lead. And we are back. Savarisi will stay on the mound after a fifth inning that saw a home run and another run scored off of a few base hits from this Panthers offense. And it was it was kind of a, a going out party, if you will, for the Panthers, if you will, after really a few innings where they just really have not been able to muster anything together. But it was a solid inning for the Panthers, and maybe they could continue that here in the six. Yeah, in case you're wondering, we'll play nine innings tonight. And then the way they do doubleheaders, Dylan, I, it took me a while to grasp this, but they do seven innings in the first game. Yes. And they do nine, nine innings in the second game. But if the first game goes nine, or goes past seven, I should say, then they'll play nine in the next game. Or seven in the next game. Correct. So that's the reason they do the seven in the first game, is they have the option to cut the second game back to seven. Yes. If the first game goes into extra innings. Took me a while to grasp that. <laughs> I'm a slow learner. 0-2 count here. The pitch on the way to Quelo, and that's strong on and missed strike three. Savarisi getting back to work, and he has had a great night tonight, Bob. I'll tell you, Dylan, I had a chance when I took a restroom break last inning. 
the guys are uh, working the Yakertech table. Mm. So the Yakertech system allows them to see how Savarese's uh, velocity and spin rate on every pitch. It's a seventh strikeout on the night. That ball's hit out of the left field. This may be a similar shot, and Ooh. that ball is gone. Home run for the Panthers. Bermudez will hit his home run, hit the second home run hit out of the left field tonight. And the next guy who's up, which is Jones, Jace Jones, who hit the first home run of the evening, he's probably like, man, that's a little bit of a repeat, if you will. Home run number two on the night for the Panthers, and that will give the Panthers a three-run deficit here in the six. They are striking on the the uh, three or the three one lead, if you will, here for the Bobcats, and that lead continues to dwindle as the Bobcats still hold on to it. Uh, still a pretty hefty lead, pretty healthy. I thought Cole had a chance at that. He climbed the fence well, but I think he kind of put his glove up blindly. Like by the time he got back there, I don't think he had yeah. time to turn around and see where the ball was. And that's he a wasn't tough, at, tough wasn't play that too far with off. The shadows as well, Bob. I mean. You know, the field's getting a little bit darker. There's a lot less sunlight coming through the ballpark. It might be a little bit tough to play some of those balls, but give credit to Cole on trying to at least go after that, that, that ball hit out on the left. We got that one patch, which is in left field, of the sunlight still coming through. Other than that, it's pretty much all shadows. Yeah. A little bit over field. towards first base maybe, but really nothing too extensive that may really affect the first baseman Dickerson. Or, excuse me, not Dickerson. Oh, yeah, no, Dickerson. My bad. Got to get used to this new team, Bob. A lot of new faces on this roster. Yeah, remember we had James Strom at first forever. I know. Foul ball off the bat of Jones, and it's now going to be one and two with one away. I think we still have one of the most uh, majestic kind of fields when the lights come on because we've got Absolutely. that wooded area behind the fence, which you can see now, of course, with the lights – as Savarese misses low. With the lights, uh, the Musco lighting, there's very little overspill lighting. So you'll see a little bit of the woods, but it's it's a very nice uh, field at night because you don't have other lights that are Strong in the background. Strike three, and just like that, the ace strikeout of the night for Savarese, and two away here in the six with only the home run to the credit of the Panthers. I mean... If you're Severis, I know you have a lot of few runs the last few innings, but if you could get out with just this home run, if you could get out of this inning with only allowing a home run, I think that's a pretty solid inning if you are Severis. I mean, deep into this game, you, you may lose a little bit of your feel on some of your pitches, but I think he's still done a pretty solid job. Well, the thing that will drive a coach nuts is if you have a big lead and you keep walking, guys. That's true. So just, Potentially just like that. So It takes a lot. Pitch. Oh, that's a, yeah. And here comes Coach Coleman. But, you know, if you're Coach Coleman, oh, he might just be getting the ball. I think he's ball. just getting the ball. Yeah, if you're Coach Coleman, you're telling your pitcher, hey, throw strikes. It takes another three home runs to tie this up Yeah, if you keep doing that. But if you start walking, guys, you know, all of a sudden you get two or three runners on base, one swing will get you out of the lead. Yeah, I mean, you still, again, you still have a comfortable lead here. You're up by three, so it's it's not overly – concerning at this point but uh, again it, oh it's not a comfortable no no lead is comfortable <laughs> you're you're right there bob in baseball you're you're right there it's uh i've no seen lead is i've seen three run leads evaporate in a matter of minutes so six three score pitches down low no movement at all on first from ray ross or ross ray excuse me good play by tolentino there marlon, behind the plate marlon <clears throat> bowen who has a single and also a ground out to his credit so far. He grounded out back in the third inning and singled back in the fifth inning. That was a part of that big two-run inning for the Panthers that catapulted them to what was a four-run deficit at the end of the fifth inning. Check swing. The base umpires asked for help. He says, yes, he did go. So one-two count now. One and two, two outs here for Severis trying to get out of this inning. Grounder over to second. Habuda, great job on the hop there and able to make the play. And there will be the third out of the top half of the six. So we head into the bottom half of the sixth inning. One run does score off a home run from Bermudez. Derek Bermudez on the home run out to left. It's again a three-run lead for the Bobcats as we head into the bottom half of the inning.
Castillo will lead things off here for the Bobcats. Daniel Dariel Castillo will be due up here as we kick off the bottom half of the six as we rapidly approach the final third of this ball game as Castillo leads things off with a single. And that will bring up now the shortstop D. Alturi up to the dish after a leadoff single from Castillo. Bob Castillo's wearing a hoodie. I just noticed that. I, you don't see a lot of players wearing, like, heavy clothing in, in baseball. It's uh, usually a lot of players are kind of wearing maybe like a light, you know, long sleeve shirt underneath. But you do not see hoodies worn a lot of times by baseball players. Yeah, well, who knows? Maybe he had a great game and uh, he was wearing his hoodie when he had a great game. And I he's so. going to continue. Baseball <laughs> players are very superstitious. You're right there. You are right there. Pitch is going to be low. Called a ball, 2-0. 6-3 score. Six runs on seven hits, no errors for your Bobcats, while three runs, six hits, and no errors for the Panthers is the line so far here on the evening. Pitch is called a strike. It's going to be 2-1. Just a stunning night for baseball, Bob. Really, lights are starting to come on. You're st starting to see the night sky roll in it's going to be a, a a fun final few innings once we start seeing the lights come on here in full force as you mentioned bob earlier it just really feels once the lights come on it feels like the stadium just has place when you see it you know just kind of it's really the stadium and then nothing else surrounding it it's kind of an ominous view of the of the ballpark when it starts becoming night and it's interesting when you have the softball field now laying up as well. you got to get used to it a little bit when you're up here and seeing the softball field also lit up at the same time. It's got a magic feeling. Yeah. <laughs> it's majestic. Is, exactly. that, is that why it's Majestic, it? yeah. Is that why it's majestic? Because it's got magic? I don't know. Maybe that's why they named the brand Majestic back in the day. Remember that yeah. used to be the MLB uniform provider. Ball's fouled away. So well, two no matter, two. No matter what words you use to describe it, it's good. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. And, Bobby, you can even talk a little bit about, I mean, how important the lights were to this team. I mean, you know, with the Coochie River Electric Co-op Park providing both of these sets of lights to both the softball and baseball fields, and it's really been receptive quite well over the past few seasons, more so with baseball, especially at the beginning, and obviously – even too with uh, with softball here in their first season with the lights, it's it's been one of the, the hot topics amongst the players. They really enjoy playing under the lights. Yeah, well, they're all students and they're really good students. I yeah, think our absolutely. average GPA was like a three point six or seven last year for a team for baseball. But so it gives us the athletes a chance to focus on their classes, get their studying done, and then uh, of course they come out to play at night. They've got all that done. But uh, also, Dylan, it's allowed us to host a lot of high school teams. I know Coach Coleman allows each home team, each uh, team in our district, to, to host a home game here on our field. That ball is hit out in the left field. That ball is deep out in the left field. It is high. It is far. Goodbye, baseball. So long, D. Alturi with a two-run shot, and just like that, when we thought the lead was maybe not going in the favor of the bobcats if you will with the the advantage add a couple more five run lead for the bobcats eight three your score for dl truly that dylan that's his ninth home run so he pulls within one of the conference leader uh, lewis out of st john's river state college so ninth home run of the year Bob, left field has been a hot spot tonight so far for the home runs. And, I mean, there's really not a ton of wind. There was a little bit of wind going out towards left field, but it, not really a strong wind that would maybe pull stuff out to left. That was just a great piece of hitting there by D.L. Torrey and another opposite field homer for the Bobcats. Yeah, traditionally the ball does travel well, though, to left it and does. left center. Mo yeah. Mostly left center. But that ball was hit well. Yeah, left field has been a hotbed, actually, for some of our home runs here at the ballpark as well. Center field might be the toughest part of the ballpark to hit as a hitter, and that's just going to be tough to field over at first. The first baseman for 
the Panthers, Jace Jones just got eaten up by that ball, uh, just really a bad hop over there at first base, and now bring him now Aiden Corn on the single. That's one of those balls, Dylan, tons of top spin on it. And if you, yeah. you know, if you play it back, it'll probably still eat you up. So he did a good job there trying to get that short hop, but just couldn't come up with it. It's almost a do or die. You come in and try to get on that short hop. If not, it's going to be trouble anyway. So here comes Aiden Corn up to the dish. Corn has a single, has actually two singles on in the evening. And a stolen base. And a stolen base as well, yes. He did... He hasn't come around and score yet so far in this game. He's been close. He's been at third the last two appearances. He's been on on base for the Bobcats. So he's he's been threatening the score. He just has not been able to get to the plate in his last two chances to get on, on base. He hasn't scored, but I didn't realize he was such a menace on the base <laughs> pass with these stolen bases. Really, the team has been a menace, Bob. We saw... Uh, we saw... Habuda earlier in the game, he was like halfway in between short and her between second and third earlier in the game. So. I mean, if I look at Aiden, I'm like, that's not a base stealing threat. No, Aiden's a very almost a stocky guy, if you will. He, he doesn't look like your your typical base stealing player, if you will. So yeah, he's I he's not really a, a look doesn't look like a speed threat. That's on part him. of his game. I think he's just deceptive. Yeah. And some guys are like that, Bob. I mean, you look at guys in, in, in especially in Major League Baseball you, nowadays, you look at guys who may not be have the size maybe to hit home runs, but they can hit some bombs. I mean, yeah. you look at a guy like, I mean, a few years ago, Chris Davis with the Oakland A's. He's you know, a small little guy, but he Speak, can just hit some home runs speaking easily. Speaking of stolen bases there, Arroyo still second, so we've got a runner at second. No outs, 3-2 count to Corn. It's just the way the game has changed, and... and You've seen that and over the years. Corn will take ball four. Now, I will say this uh, to Aiden Corn's credit, all kidding aside, he got a tremendous jump when he stole third base. Absolutely. I remember that ball was in the dirt or it bounced away from the catcher, but he had third base stolen even without that happening. So that'll bring up to the plate Dickerson, and this will be Luke Dickerson up to the dish, and we will have a mound visit here briefly between the catcher and the pitcher. And a lot of times, Dylan, I mean – you know, you could have great speed, but if you don't get a good yeah. read and a good jump, uh, you're not going to be as successful as as others. And yep. Aiden Korn, I mean, he may not have blazing speed, but he's if he reads the pitches well and gets a good jump uh, on the pitchers, a lot of times pitchers will tip off with their certain cadence they have on the mound. And if you can read that, you can get a tremendous jump and steal bases. Absolutely. I think players, especially nowadays, they're they're – distinctiveness if you will in in reading pitchers and and reading the the layout of the field in terms of situations their their situational awareness i think has gotten a lot better in baseball and it's impressive to see players you know awareness on the base pass especially i mean it has really been a huge part of the game now and you're even seeing across you know the high collegiate levels and even now even in the major leagues i think players are starting to be more all around players and, and being more receptive to some of these situational awarenesses and there's nowhere to go for Chris Arroyo and there's the first out of the inning on the throwback into second Arroyo just got swallowed up over there at second base yeah good play there by the Panthers that's just good baseball got too happy over there got too much of a lead and Panthers able to throw behind him and get him picked off at second so that takes away the runner over at second. Aiden Korn does still stay over at first, so there is still a runner on for the Bobcats. Pitch on the way to Dickerson it is going to be called a strike one and one now as a count and it'll even count. Again, these two teams will meet up again tomorrow, but it will be in South Florida State's territory. Avon Park. Avon Park. I believe I've actually drove by their facility, actually, not too recently, or not too long ago, I should say. I was on my way down to Sebring, Florida, and actually drove by their, their facility. Got a nice little ballpark down there, Bob. Yeah, it's a great pro program run by Rick Head. Anytime you have a great program, you got a great facility, great coach. Ball's fouled away. you got players that uh, really respect the program because, uh, you know, the, a lot of times the facility is an indication of the quality of your program. Absolutely. No, I agree. I mean, and a lot of these facilities are, are getting – Impressive. I mean, you see some of these new facilities, especially uh, 
and the D1 level especially here in in, in the Region 8 conference, but also in, in D2 as well. It's uh, Remember, some of these teams were D1 teams at one point, and that's going to hit off the glove. This, could be this is going to be trouble. This may score in a run. Uh, well, Corn will be held up over there at third base. So runners will move on the error out there in right field. I'm not actually sure what ended up happening there, Bob, for the right fielder for the Panthers. Quelo on the play it just looked like he might have hit out of his glove or tipped off his glove and didn't look like he realized that it maybe went behind him. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what happened there on that play, but I think just, nevertheless, it worked out in Dickerson's favor. Yeah, similar to the ball at first base. I think that ball had so much top spin on it. I think it just surprised the right fielder with how quickly it came up and it it was on him and it, before he knew it, and it bounced by him and hit off his glove and went behind him. Then I don't think he actually knew it was behind him for a second. So we're going to count that as a, a single E9 on the call. That would Correct. still be a base hit there, but the error allowed the runners to move. So Dickerson will be at second, Corn over at third, with still one away here in the six. And as you can see, the infield has moved up significantly here for a potential bunt opportunity for the Bobcats. And we've seen so far the Bobcats have not been afraid to put down the bunt and lay down a bunt here in these situations. Well, the Panthers, they want to cut off a run at the plate if they can. So even on a ground ball, they're banking on something being hit at one of their infielders. Of course, the Bobcats may not go on contact. They may uh, just want to... Grounder up the yeah, middle. That's going to be a base hit. Perfect placement for that base hit by DeGuespi. That will actually score in two runs. So Dickerson and Korn will come in to score, and the lead continues to extend now 10-3 to Bobcats here in the six. And Bob, when you when you thought the Panthers were maybe going to get something going offensively, maybe push and, and threaten the Bobcats here on their side offensively, Bobcats are just continuing to respond, and it's been an impressive showing these last few innings. As here comes Andy Polk out to the – out to the mound and will at least have a mound visit here for the second time so 10-3 score and another mound visit with the S S south florida state pitcher for the panthers yeah slow walk to the mound dylan as i see a pitcher starting to get warmed up down the left field line for the panthers so he'll probably wait till the umpire breaks this up and it'll give that pitcher a little bit of time to warm up So Tolentino is at the dish now for the Bobcats, followed by Cole and then Habuda. Those will be the final two in the Bobcats order who have yet to get up to the dish here in this little stretch of runs that the Bobcats have strung together. It's really just been an impressive offensive showing for the Bobcats. They've not been stopped offensively, and it just seems like when the Panthers have gotten the ball going a little bit if you will have gotten things going on, on offensively their way it just the bobcats just find ways to respond and continue to add to their lead and this is not good for the panthers if you are rick hit squad they you know you wanted to they were in a good spot being down six three but now ten three it's a little bit of uh favorable advantage here for phsc First pitch to Tolentino called a strike down and away, and it's going to be 0-1. Still one out here in the six, so still favorable for the Bobcats here in this inning. And throw over the first, no, no, not in time. There's some actually movement going going on down towards the uh, dugout area on the right side here. Out um, looks like out near where our fans are actually I believe just two players playing some catch over there so maybe nothing of importance and that ball popped out in the air out in the right field and caught and there'll be two way actually that's Severisi Bob that's going to be down over towards the dugout over where the fans are over near kind of the road I think he's just trying to get some pitches in trying to stay warm and that's Important for a pitcher when you have these long innings. Trying to stay warm, get some throws in, and he's doing that right now, it looks like, over here towards the right field side. 
if I'm not mistaken, that is Savarisi in 27, it looks like, throwing over here towards the dugout. So two outs here for Anthony Cole. Cole will chop that one foul towards the Panthers dugout, and there will be it will be 0-1. So 11 hits now for the Bobcats as they eclipse into double digits across the board. The only error so far between both teams came this inning with that hit out in the right field by Luke Dickerson just a few ABs ago. That ball goes right behind us to the right of the broadcast booth and it'll now be 0-2. So it looks like Savarisi will have another inning of work here for the Bobcats as it is now 0-2 to Anthony Cole. Here's a pitch down low and it's going to be 1-2. and two. Either that Bob or Savarisi could have just been trying to get some of his last few pitches on the side, maybe there will be a pitching change, and maybe he's just trying to get up to his pitch count that he would have thrown here this evening. So, a lot of potential for what could have, what that could have been. Obviously, you want to stay warm in a long inning like this offensively, where the Bobcats really got the off the bats going. That ball is hit out in the left field. Cole may have a chance for a base hit, but that will actually be caught by the left fielder for the Panthers. That will be Marlon Bowen, and that will end the sixth inning. So we head into the top half of the seventh. 10 threes, your score. 11 hits now for the Bobcats. A home run and a couple runs batted in for PHSC as we head into the top half of the inning with a seven run advantage. Nine, one, and two due up here in the top half of the seventh inning. Savarisi will be back up to pitch here for the Bobcats in his seventh inning of work. He's had a very, very impressive start tonight as he will look to try to continue his outing. We'll see how many innings longer he may go, but he has done a very solid job of getting through this Panthers offense and this batting order for Rick Hit squad as the Bobcats look to try to grab the first of the three games this weekend between these two squads. Balls popped up in the air and fouled away towards the light post over here towards the dugout. So two and one your count here with nobody out in the seventh inning before we hit the seventh inning stretch, if you will, from Newport Ritchie, Florida. We don't really play the seventh inning stretch, though, here, Bob. We don't have any uh, audio that plays that during the middle of the inning, so. Oh, well, we have no talent to sing it up yeah. here. I mean, <laughs> we should get you, Bob. We'll have you. But Remember Harry you... Carey used to <laughs> sing it. I don't know if you want to hear my singing voice a little bit. That's going to be swung on and missed, yeah. two and two. We need, we need some talent. We need to recruit somebody who can <laughs> sing that up here. I think we might. I think we might. We're missing that up here. 
So three and two, full count here to Mercado, the shortstop. Three and two pitch on the way from Savarisi, and that's fouled away, and it's going to be three and two still. Lights are starting to come into effect here from Pasco Renato State College. 3-2. Foul back towards the backstop, and it will continue to stay a full count. Last inning, a homer for the Panthers gave them a 3-6 deficit. Then the big inning here in the bottom half of the six gave the Bobcats the 10-3 lead that we're currently sitting at. And that's looked at for a strike three call. And still, Savarese is just dealing out there on the mound. His ninth strikeout of the night. Sure, Coach Coleman likes this outing from Savarese because with two games tomorrow, he wants to keep as many arms, like we talked about earlier, as many arms available for the doubleheader tomorrow. So one out here in the seventh, and that will bring up to the dish the leadoff hitter, Dawson Bryant. It'll be Bryant and then Davis, followed by Vargas in the hole, due up here for the Panthers if we get to Vargas here in this inning. Here's the pitch, 0-1, or 0-0. It's going to be called a strike. It'll be 0-1. Now, if we get to 10Ks, we're not like the Rays. We don't have a uh, free taco and chips to offer to our fans that are listening out there unfortunately no but if we have any business sponsors that want to go in on that we could do that'd something. be cool yeah that would be cool yeah all of our fans out there i mean even people on the broadcast right they get uh free what do they give them free tacos free tacos at at uh T tijuana flats over at the race games if you uh get 10 <laughs> strikeouts so two and two count here to Dawson Bryan, who has actually struck out in his first two appearances. He did get on board with a single back in the fifth inning. Looking to try to keep away from a third strikeout of the night for him. Full count, 3-2. And the pitch is on his way. And that's going to be just a bit outside. <laughs> And that will now bring up Adrian Davis up to the dish. So a runner aboard here for the Panthers with Davis up now to hit for South Florida State. Davis, who does have a single himself on the night, though he did fly out back in the fifth and grounded out back in his first A.B. in the first inning. You know what we haven't seen yet, Dylan? What have we not seen? We've not seen a double play. We have not seen a double play, you're right. So let's hope for one of those nice turf two hoppers and turn two. The 0 1 from Savarisi. Grounded. This may be your double play, potentially, but the. And that's going to go past the first baseman, Dickerson. They will hold Dawson Bryan over at third base so uh, a great play over at short but just not able to corral it cleanly and get it over to first cleanly either so that will be a opportunity given the panthers an opportunity with runners at the corners and the short or the second baseman brandon vargas here up to the ditch I would assume you would consider that an E5 e on the play, or E6 on the play. That will be out in the left field for a base hit. A little dribbler out to left, and that will bring in a run. It will now be 10-4 to 4 Panthers. Hefty mound visit here between Tolentino and Savarisi. Trying to calm down Savarisi as he's a lot of few base hits here in these last few batters, but 
still a chance for him to get out of this inning with only one run allowed. Four runs up to this point now scored for the Panthers with eight hits and one error. No error was called, though, on that grounder over to short. A little surprise there. I would have thought that would have been scored as an error, but nevertheless, it will still be one away here in the seventh. I just realized, Dylan, I looked up and you look like a ghostly figure on the screen <laughs> on the broadcast. And I realized if we turn the lights off here in the booth, the quality is a little bit better on your on your viewing at home. Hey, people don't realize I'm just haunting you. That's, that's what it is. So, Yeah, it's a much better picture. So thanks for bearing with us, everybody. And we'll have to remember that next time when the sun goes down. We, our picture looks a lot better when we have the lights off here Absolutely. in the booth. Absolutely. Makes it hard to see our notes, but <laughs> better for the viewers. It's better for us. Yeah, it's not too bad. We still got some decent lighting with the with the field lighting, so could still see pretty well. Yeah, that or we could open up the window so we didn't get the glare off the window. That's true. Yeah, I'll be in a in between inning situation or in between uh, the half half inning for for the bottom of the seventh. It's our seventh inning stretch up here in the broadcast booth, if you it's will. It's our seventh inning ghost. Seventh inning ghost, yeah, exactly. Two and two. So two balls, two strikes, one out here in the seventh. Runners on first and second here for the Panthers. Pitch on the way outside, and it will now be a full count, three, two. Six run lead for the Bobcats. Panthers looking to try to approach that 10 run mark that the Bobcats put up back in the bottom half of the six here's a pitch called strike three and the throw over not in time but nevertheless number 10 is gifted to the Bobcats and that will bring up two outs here in the seventh another backwards K for Savarese on the mound, and that will now bring up two outs here in the seventh. And Bobcat, give credit to Savarese. Even with allowing that one run, one run, he has a chance here to potentially get out of the inning with only allowing that one run. Did you say that was his 10th strikeout? 10th strikeout of the night. <clears throat> it's a good night. <clears throat> yeah, very good night for Savarese. Again, no tacos, unfortunately. Not yet, at least. So if any sponsors are out there, we might be able to... Yeah. Get, a, get a free taco and chips with the uh, with the 10 strikeout night or 10 strikeout performance. Sponsored by uh, Kane's Furniture with the Rays, Bob. So if we did that, we'd have to hand stuff out to people here at the game. I think right? we might. Yeah, we might have to. Well, really, they would receive a voucher. That's how it works with the Rays. You get a right. voucher and you pick it up. So. But we'd, we'd have to get them the vouchers. We'd have to yeah, exactly. <clears throat> open up the window and <laughs> be like a ticket window here. We'd have to start giving them out. <laughs> We're a multi-purpose booth up here in at PHSC. 3-0 the count here, two outs, seventh inning. Here's a pitch, and that's outside, and it'll be ball four. And that will load the bases. So things are getting a little dicey here for Savarese in the seventh inning. But here comes Lyndon Coleman out to the mound, and this may do it for his starter here tonight. Well, if this is, if it, if this is it, which it's looking like it will be, Savarese has a, had a tremendous outing. Ten strikeouts tonight. He did allow a few runs, but pretty much kept things in check for the Bobcats tonight. Linden maybe just be talking to him. So maybe we're not going to see a pitching change. I think his preference would be to let Savarese try to get out of the inning. And yeah, then that's yeah. what he's going to do. And, and I think the bullpen thought maybe there was going to be a pitching change, but they, uh, they quickly closed the door once they saw it was a bit of a longer conversation. So Savarese will look to try to close the door here on the seventh inning. Linden's going to have faith in his starter here tonight. And I think as a starting pitcher, and I think even as a as a coach, you know, you want to give your starter the chance to close out this inning at least, especially for the performance he's had. And I think as Savarese having that trust or having the the coach trust in you to do that, I think it, you know, obviously may put a little bit of pressure on him, but I think it's, it definitely gives you some confidence as well as, as a pitcher. Pitcher's call strike one and one. Coach Coleman might have told him, hey, this would be your last hitter either way. 
Yeah. It's potential too. <clears throat> Either yeah, going right. to get out of the inning or, you know, if you don't get them, I'm going to come get you. Yeah. No, I, I think you're right, Bob. And I mean, this is a, a very interesting situation here. That's called a strike. What a pitch by Savarese. And he still is finding his, his placement on his pitches, Bob. He really hasn't lost his touch. I mean, he's still pitching quite well for being so deep into this game. Here's a one, two from Savarese chopped and foul that was just almost a uh staying alive foul ball by jace jones and that will bring up here the a one and two count so one two two outs here in the seventh bases are loaded massive situation here for the bobcats and that's going to be inside two and two now and it'll even the count yeah, I think Savarese wanted to – he threw one in the dirt outside that pitch before that, and then I think he wanted to go up and in. Now he's got a 2-2 count. I'm sure he's just going to try to throw something here, maybe on the outside part of the plate. 2-2. Two and two. And down low, 3-2. and two. And this is a pressurous situation here, Bob. 3-2 count, two outs here in inning number seven, and a chance for the Panthers to really – open the floodgates and maybe try to get back into this ball game here runners are going already the the third baseman the guy who's at third dawson bryant hadn't even moved yet and there was already movement on the base path but nevertheless it was caught out in the right field and severis able to get out of an inning unscathed bases were loaded three left on we head into the bottom half of the seventh it's still 10-4 as the panthers only strike one onto their run totals James Turnbull will be on the mound here for the Panthers as it is the Bobcats up to hit here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Hopefully everybody stretched at home while they were on their break. It's going to be 8, 9, and 1 here for PHSC as we have the third pitcher in the game here for the Panthers. Looking at James Turnbull's numbers on the season, not a huge sample size on the year. 13 appearances, however, a 12.08 ERA. It's been a uh, rough pitching season so far for the Panthers as that ball is flied out in the left field and caught. There's one away. So Abuda will... Be the first out of the inning, and I'll bring up to the plate now Dariel Castillo. But looking at the numbers, Bob, through, for the Panthers, only one pitcher 
is under a four ERA on the on the season for the Panthers. So pitching has definitely been a a bit of a struggle for this Panthers team on the year, and that's something you definitely gotta you know get sorted out, especially as you get closer and closer to the tournament and and once you get into that portion you really need to have your pitching on point yeah as you get into postseason you can never have enough pitching that's for sure <clears throat> of course i've seen uh pitchers of our own on the bobcats <clears throat> not have good regular seasons but all of a sudden at the end of the season something's clicking maybe their arms getting uh, a little bit stronger or something at the end of the season and they they throw well in postseason yeah, you're not you're not wrong, Bob. They're not you are not wrong there, Bob. I mean, it's a lot of times you see players just do really good there. As I was three unassisted on the play, so there will now be two away. I mean, yeah, some pitchers once you get in the postseason play, they start feeling it. You know, I think they they live up to that moment, and and sometimes that that's what you need is to get into those big time situations. Not to say that these aren't big moments at this point in the season but once you get into playoff time you know what's at stake it's your season or it's continuing on and continuing to try to push in your postseason aspirations so yeah i think it just you know sometimes the pitchers you know thrive in those type of moments so you know you sometimes could see some pitchers who may have not had some really good regular seasons really thrive in in these big time uh situations for teams so here's a one and oh after two outs two quick outs at that and there will be a It'll be a one-on-one -on -one count after the swing and the miss. Remember our team that went out to Enid, Oklahoma about five years ago? Some of our best pitchers out in Oklahoma were really not pitching well and not pitching many innings at all in the regular season. But you get into postseason, you need a lot of arms. All of a sudden, somebody gets hot. One-on-one. One. Pitchers are just like one. hitters. They can get in a groove, and next thing you know, their ball's got a lot of movement on it. They find a different arm angle. Something changes, and they become your best pitchers. Absolutely, Bob. No, you're right. I mean, it's – you know, pitching is a game about streaks. I mean, guys will have some bad stretches during a season. Some guys will have really good stretches during the season. And, you know, you just got to stay composed in those moments and, and continue to fight. And I think that's that's kind of one of the, uh, uh, you know, admirable things about some pitchers nowadays is they're willing to continue to compete on the mound even through the bad times. So you just got to stay, you know, good on those pressures moments great pitch though there by number three james turnbull and that will end the inning quickly so we head into the top half of the eighth 10 four is your score bobcats have a nice lead as we the final few innings here of this ball game 10 four bobcats leading here as we head into the top half of the inning
Ross Ray will lead things off here for the Panthers. It's going to be 7, 8, and 9, the bottom part of the order due up here for South Florida State on a darkening night here from Newport Ritchie, Florida. 10-4 your score on the first game of three for the weekend series between the Panthers and the Bobcats as these two teams look to jockey for position in the conference standings here as we get closer and closer to the tournament. Bob, I, I know it's tough to talk about early on here, especially as we approach the early part of April, but it's exciting, I think, as a fan to know that postseason baseball is about to come. Um, and we do have a new pitcher on the mound here, number 12 for the Bobcats. That's going to be Cesar Valera on the mound here for PHSC. That ball's fouled away and I believe hit off the fence over there towards the left side of the field. So that will bring up a one and two count. Yeah, Valera, Dylan comes into the game with a 6.75 ERA. Swung on and missed, right? <clears throat> this will be his eighth appearance. 6.2 innings, given up eight hits in those innings, five runs, five earned runs, six base on balls, and he does have 12 strikeouts. So that'll bring him to the dish now, Marlon Bowen. Bowen, the left fielder. He's made some nice plays out in left. He's been pretty thrifty out there making some plays. So far in the night, he does have a single, but he also has two ground outs. One, th one for three on the evening. Pitch low in the dirt. It's going to be one and one now. It'll even the count. Valera's got some good movement on these pitches, though. He does. He does, Bob. And, and you know, as a pitcher, that's probably one of the toughest things as a pitcher, especially a young pitcher at this level, is working on those breaking ball pitches and, and really perfecting them. It, it, it can be tough, you know, especially in game action. You know, it's it's a it's a process for a lot of these younger guys, and and that's why you see, especially in the early levels of the minor leagues, and even even still in top level collegiate baseball, you know, some guys may struggle early on in the season when they're starting to work on these pitches and such because they are difficult pitches to, to master, and it's impressive to see once a guy has a a wipeout slider, or a impressive changeup. So it's it's fun to see that development process with pitchers. Well, at this level, Dylan, the hitters are so good, so your velocity, they'll catch on to. Absolutely. But uh, movement, especially late movement, even if you're throwing, um, you know, you don't have to throw 90-95, but if no. you've got good movement, you can get hitters out at this level. Yeah, I mean, we, we see that time and time again. Pitchers may not have a ton of velocity, but they can get you with the movement as a throw over to first in time. There's kind of a a miscommunication there on whether the ball was in the dirt or if it was just a regular strikeout, but it ended up being a ball in the dirt. So that will be the second out of the inning. Two hitters for Valera and two strikeouts. So that'll bring up the number nine hitter, and this will be Mercado, the shortstop tonight for the Panthers, and that will be outside 1-0. And Valero doing just what Coach Coleman said, come in and throw strikes. Continuing off of what Savarese had, the last seven innings and again what an impressive showing he had seven strikeouts was stayed poised and really didn't allow a whole lot i mean the four runs he allowed but he he never really got into too much trouble at all during his outing it was an impressive showing from savarese tonight i don't know what that ball hit but it when it <laughs> when it landed it never went anywhere it yeah, just it stuck on odd. the turf yeah it was very odd Almost like a wedge shot. It didn't back up really, but it just hit and it didn't roll either way. It just stuck. Must have had some friction to it. <laughs> like it had stickum or something on it. That seems like a Mythbusters thing. That's that's something we need the Mythbusters to come out for. Yeah. Figure how do out you, the situation. How do you? I guess it had. <laughs> I guess it had a lot of backspin, but not too much. So it just hit and stuck. It didn't move. I, I guess not an so. inch. I guess it, so. Two and two count. Here's the pitch. What a pitch by Valera! Right down the middle. What an inning. Yeah, what an inning. So Valera goes right down Broadway to finish out the top half of the eighth and sends the Bobcats singing and dancing into the bottom half of the eighth inning as it's a 10-4 lead for your Bobcats here as we approach the final inning of action.
Chris Arroyo will lead things off. Arroyo, Corn, and Dickerson. Two, three, and four do up here for the Bobcats in the bottom half of the eighth inning. One more time potentially for the Bobcats to hit before we try to wrap things up in the top half of the ninth inning for PHSC. Arroyo will drive that one out in the right field. Tough play to make for the second baseman out there. That's going to be Vargas not able to make a play and an early single to lead off the eighth. Nothing too much there on that base hit there, Bob. Just a little uh, drift around in the right field, and Vargas just could not come up with it to make a play. And a nice, easy single there. As it looks like there's actually going to be a pinch runner coming into the game here for PHSC. That's going to be number one, Josh Cohn, coming into the game. Actually, I think it's number 11, Dylan. Is it number 11? Jose it looked like Ayala. Two, two ones there, Jose Ayala. Yep. And Corn will be the hitter. Yeah, umpire just telling everybody that there's a pinch runner. I'll get a confirmation on the pinch runner just to make sure. So Bobcats maybe seeing if they can tack on a few insurance runs here. Up by six in the eighth inning. Aiden Corn's the hitter. Luke Dickerson is on deck. Bob, it is going to be Jose Ayala over there at first base, so it is going to be 0-1 with nobody out here in the eighth. Here's the pitch. Down low and inside, and it's going to be now 1-1. One one. Evens account here, 2-8 and corn. Just for the record, Dylan, my eyes are better than yours. Because I, I thought <laughs> that like said number one. 11. No, I, like I said one. it was number 11. It is a number one, but there's another one next to it. That was close enough. I was halfway there. <laughs> That doesn't go a long way in broadcasting in baseball, so. Throw over in time, or not in time, I should say. And it's going to be staying at one and one for the count. Now, a lot of times with left-handers, I know base runners will go on first movement. They can be so crafty with their move to first. They'll hang that leg in the air, and sometimes you can get a guy leaning. Ooh, Corn took that one. I think he wanted that one. Corn is two and two on the night. He's been on base in each of his four plate appearances the last at bats that he's had he walked the last two abs and then singled in his first two so he'll be looking to try to go five for five technically speaking although technically he is two for two if you're officially scoring from home here's the one at one and two and that ball is going to be outside low and away and it will be now one and two or to me two and two so 2-2 two -two count in the 8th inning. 10-4 your score. 12 hits for the Bobcats up to this point here in the bottom half of the 8th inning. That very well could be the final box score by the end of the ninth inning, or by the middle of the ninth inning, I should say. Depending on if things stand the way they are. Yeah, Bobcats, 10 runs, 12 hits, no errors. And for South Florida State, four <laughs> runs on eight hits and one error. Swung on a miss, and that will be out number one. So the first strikeout of the night for Aiden Korn. Now bring up now Luke Dickerson up to the dish. Dickerson also has a few hits on the evening. He's got a two Singles and a or three singles, three straight singles on the night here for the Bobcats. So he's been very effective getting on base here so far for PHSC. He's three for four. Yeah, Dickerson's got three of the twelve hits. High. He's got twenty five percent of the hits for the Bobcats. Yeah, you look at, I mean, really, if you look at it, Arroyo, Corn, and Dickerson have all hit the ball very well. I mean, you look at Arroyo with a, a double and a pair of singles, and then with. Corn, you had two singles in the early part of the game and then three straight singles here for Dickerson. So it's been a really effective game for the, the middle part of the order, if you will, for the Bobcats. Really the top part of the order, I should say, for the Bobcats with two, three, and four. I expect that out of your two, three, four hitters. No, yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. You hope that you can see that type of success coming from those guys because, I mean, those are your, your most probably effective hitters, if you will, for a team. So... It's good to see the the success, a lot of the success coming from those guys. I mean, from Corn and, and Arroyo and Dickerson. 
So two and one now the count here to Dickerson with the pinch runner Ayala over at first. Again, still trying to get all the all the names correct. Pitch clock violation. That's going to be on the pitcher. Now, remember, fans, if, if you're unfamiliar, and this is very similar to what Major League Baseball has done, and even in the D1 level, pitch clocks are in order in Juco ball, which I think is, is, a, is a good move by junior college, by the NJCAA, as that swung on a miss, and it'll be 3-2, and two, given the fact that it's now becoming a thing in baseball. I think you might see Ayala on the move here. I wouldn't be surprised if they throw over to first, see if they can catch him on a first move kind of base stealing, but we'll see if Ayala gets going here. Three and two count. Here's a pitch and ball four. So no movement over there at first. And that'll bring up Dylan DeGespi up to the dish as runners will be on first and second here with only one away. But Bob, kind of going back to that pitch clock violation there, it, it's really becoming something now where I think as a player, it's just now a new part of the game that you got to learn. And I think there's it's going to really create some interesting strategy. And, and So what is it in Major League Baseball now? The the You have how many seconds? You have about 14 seconds with a runner on. Pitch. With, with a, a runner with on? A, with a runner on, not on. Well, how much with a runner, with a runner on, on? You have about 18 or 20 seconds. All right, they give you a few more. Yep. But it's not that long. You gotta no. be care you gotta be careful. And it's a ball called if they don't throw it into If the pitcher doesn't throw, but if the hitter doesn't get into the box, then it's a automatic strike on the hitter. So if the hitter isn't ready and prepared by a certain time, they'll call a strike now, on the hitter. I haven't seen that called that often. The hitters usually know, I guess, to get in the 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 box. hitters are very distinctive. They know. Yeah, yeah. I mean now in major league baseball it could be a little bit different given that, you know, you have hitters walk ups and you know, there are certain things where a hitter may be inclined to take a little bit more time. So it's a little bit different in collegiate ball where you may not see a lot of the, uh, you know, maybe the presentation isn't drawn out as much. You so know? does that so fall it might on, be a little bit different. So does that fall on the scoreboard operator to cut his music off? I mean, you'd hate to be the guy playing yeah, the you music. Yeah, actually, for us, for us at, at, at the Blue Jays, we actually have to stop playing music, actually. We have yeah. to basically, there's a certain time where they say you should not be playing music by 12 seconds which is about the time that they want you to stop. And ball's low, so 3-1 count here. Bobcats, good chance to score again. Absolutely. 3-1 count, good first and second. Bases loaded situation here, Bob, with Dylan DeGuespi right now at the dish. Tolentino is on deck. Yep. Tolentino does, did get on via the walk, but has yet to hit a base hit here on the evening. Here's a pitch to DeGuespi. DeGuespi hits that one out in the shallow center. That's going to drop in for a base hit. But Ooh. this is going to be trouble. Everybody's jammed up, and that's just going to be an out over at third. Really, actually, no reason for the tag there, given that it was just a force out at third, and that will be the second out of the inning. So that really didn't work out in the Bobcats' favor. It just basically took away the lead, lead runner over at third. And that will bring up to the plate now Tolentino up to the dish with two outs in the eighth. Obviously, Bob, you hope to be able to score runs, but given the Bobcats' lead, I mean, I know you still don't want to get into those situations, but at the end of the day, it, I don't want to say it was a meaningless out, but it, obviously with the way the lead is, you, you still feel comfortable even with if you can't score a run here in the same minute. I'll tell you who's not happy about that is DeGuespi because that takes a base hit away from exactly, him. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. But you know what? You got to well, play it Well, it doesn't take a base way. hit. It still gives him a base hit. No, no, no base hit. That's a force out. Really? Yeah, no base hit. Oh, I would think that would be giving him a base hit. Yeah, so, you know, when you're a hitter, you just have to understand. Uh, of course, I think if you were to go back on that, uh, you, you know, maybe you go about a third of the way. you got to be careful because that ball's right behind second, so you really can't go halfway. You know, you always teach your base runners go halfway on a fly ball. You're not sure if it's going to yeah. be caught. But on that, it was, it was real close to second base, so you can't go halfway because then you're going to get thrown out at Absolutely. second for a double yeah. play. But maybe you go a third of the way, figuring I just got to hustle, really, you know, go head first back into second if it drop, yeah. if it if yeah. it doesn't drop, if it does drop, you're at least a, a third of the way there, and which would have made it a lot might, closer. And you might even hope too that you maybe get a bad throw out in center, maybe maybe yeah. throws them off the bag or something. I, so to be honest, I still don't know if he went a third of the way if he would have made it because he yeah. was out by a couple steps, but it would have made it a lot closer. I think the only way he would have been safe would have been a, a ball that would have gone towards the right or left of the third baseman. I think that's the only way it would have had a bad throw. And that's one I missed. So that will do it. 
So no runs are scored, even with two left on. We'll head into the ninth. Bobcats will look to try to close things out. It's a 10-4 lead here from Newport Ritchie. Top part of the order, Dawson Bryant will lead things off for the Panthers. It'll be one, two, and three in the top of the ninth inning as the Bobcats will look to try to put a bow on things here from Newport Ritchie, Florida. Ten to four is your score. Ten runs, 13 hits, no errors for the Bobcats at the end of the eighth inning. In the ninth inning, four runs, eight hits, one error to start things off here for the Panthers. We'll see if they can add anything to this six-run deficit that they currently have here in the top part of this ball game. And that ball's fouled away, and it'll be one and two. Bobcats looking to pick up their 11th conference win, and that'll keep them on top of the conference, at least uh, until we see how the doubleheader goes tomorrow. And we have no updates, I don't think, on other games taking place in Region 8. Of course, the team the Bobcats kind of keep the most eye on would be St. John's River State. Grounder up the middle, throw over to first to Dickerson in time, and the 1-3 ground out will get the first out of the ninth inning here for the Bobcats. St. John's River State is the defending tournament champions from last year that went on to the World Series. Blue Wave also the year before that, Bob. They were the first team to win in this new tournament yep. style. Yep. Then we added a few new teams last year, and St. John's River won in their first season a part of the new conference last year. So we'll see. We might have three different winners three consecutive years. We'll see. Well, Dylan, it's been great to broadcast with you again. Absolutely. Yeah, great to be back with you, Bob. And, Bob, we actually have some scores. We'll, we'll – give you a bit of an update what's going on around the region eight conference here today yeah. and do it now while we got chance. yeah so yeah we'll take a look here at the score final coming from leesburg florida on student fan day lake sumter state college able to defeat the florida state college of jacksonville blue wave four to two so that's a big uh, win yep. there for the blue wave or that's, for the uh for the lake hawks excuse me over the blue wave that's their ninth win then dylan yeah that's a big win for them as they uh will 
They'll be two behind the Bobcats in the win column, at least. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, yeah, they'll yeah they'll be in third place in the conference. Um, then you have the Palm Beach State College Panthers going up against the Vikings, as that will be ball four, and that will walk the hitter Davis, and that will bring up to the dish now Vargas. We'll, we'll continue to go through the scores here in just a second. Yeah, Bob might have hit him, Dylan. It was a 3-2 yeah. count, so he would have walked anyway. He might have yeah. hit him, though. So, again, the Blue Wave able to beat – or able to fall in defeat to the Lakehawks 4-2. And, obviously, the game here from PHSC. And then the game that was at 6, we don't have any score on it, though. The Panthers and the Vikings going up against each other at St. John's River State College. So, Palm Beach State taking on St. John's River State College – in tonight's game looking ahead to tomorrow's slate for the conference again phsc at south florida state college at one palm beach state college at st john's river at one and lake state lake sumter state college at florida state college at jacksonville also at one o'clock every team will be playing a double header tomorrow evening or tomorrow afternoon around four so it'll be a busy day in conference tomorrow bob not only in Division one, but also in our division, which is Division two. So it should be a fun afternoon if you're tuning in. I do believe South Florida State does have a broadcast, so you can go tune in and watch all the games over there on South Florida State's broadcast, if I'm not mistaken. So speaking of that, Dylan, want to give a big shout out to James Mooring and Tyler Clausen. They yeah. set us up with our equipment up here and gave us yeah. these great directions. And I had a little trouble when I logged in to the PHSC Athletics, but James answered the phone and got me Browner through it to set to up the third. broadcast. Throw over in time. Throw over to second. This could end it, and that will do it. Ball game nice. over, and just like that, the unconventional double play will wrap up tonight's festivities here from Newport Ritchie. Final score here from the night's ball game: ten to four. 10 runs on 13 hits and no errors for the Panthers. It was four runs on eight hits and one error. These two teams will be back in action tomorrow in Avon Park, Florida for a 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock doubleheader tomorrow afternoon as the Bobcats will look to try to sweep the weekend against these same Panthers tomorrow afternoon. As for myself, Dylan Spaulding, as for Bob Bade, Thank you so much for joining us here from Newport Ritchie, Florida on this Friday night. Have a great Easter weekend. Happy Easter. Stay safe. And we will look forward to seeing you on another baseball broadcast. You are listening to the Bobcats Broadcasting Network.